Hey guys, this is Andrew. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, let's dive right in. So guys, this one is going to be a bit personal, talk about my life a bit more. And it's one I think we need to talk about a bit more, and it's disability and organisation. And it's something that I've come up against time and time and time again, regardless of the support organisation. And yes, at the end of the day, they're running a business, and I res fully respect that. But the, um, when I seem to be organising care and things change, it seems to be they're wanting it to be my fault. Where I kind of have done a post on, and I got a really great comment on the blog about not accepting second rate support, about the difference between support and care. And I talked a bit about person-centred practice there. So that goes back into the social model of disability, which says that disability is caused by society and if we can fix some fundamental things about society, people with disabilities can contribute a lot more. And I fundamentally agree with this as well, but there are times when the medical model works as well, which is saying that disability is something to be cured, um, therefore we need to work towards a cure. There are some conditions that I live with that I would be grateful for if they found a cure. But alas, this is not. Yeah, um, that's a whole other thing I've got about stop trying to cure my disability because that can be incredibly invalidating. But it's disability and organisation. So I'm talking about that day to day getting stuff done, your routine. And I'll admit my little unit downstairs at the moment. It's clean but very disorganised due to having my wonderful, wonderful family over over the weekend. But this is something that I'm starting to see and talk about more and more of. Is the support workers as support workers get burned out, they go on holiday leave or um, realise how intense support is and trying to juggle sometimes two jobs as well, that they realise that it's not all taking people out to concerts or things like that. And helping people stay organised is actually a really, really big challenge as well. So guys, um, one tip I've found and is using what's at your fingertips. So, guys, my best one is pen and paper. Writing it down. Challenge for me not to lose said pen and paper. My next one is whiteboards. I use my fridge as a whiteboard all of the time. Then my next one is smartphone. Guys, these for people who have trouble staying organised. Brilliant. You've got your calendar, you can set alarms, you can do your budgeting on them as well. Um, just check, obviously, your phone plans, your internet plans as well. Um, and the apps you can get for communication as well are amazing. Um, I do also have the video on disability and communication as well. So guys, if there's any apps you know, drop them in the comments below as well as just something that I've found that I have difficulty with and my neighbours just started gardening is day-to-day -day meal planning so I am going to a meal delivery service and I felt a lot of shame around this that I'm an adult and I can't cook and then I realised hang on a minute we have so many meal delivery kits, box kits, um, things like that, that yes, I do need to develop this skill as well, but guys, you, I would encourage you, if you have trouble 
being organised, cooking, putting a meal together. If you have an NDIS package, or even if you don't, if you're a, um, have a look at some of the meal delivery services. Um, from what I've heard, um, it can be a bit hard with the paperwork, but definitely worth investigating um, with your support coordinator, support worker, if you're self-funded um, guys as well. And for what I would throw away in food waste, um, I'm finding that my family is tiring their hair out going, why didn't you do this sooner? But guys, um, some things that I've found that really, really do help is, as I said, writing it down, using my phone, email, and therefore also email, and I said about this in disability and communication, it is a written record for your support organisation as well. Guys, and the other one is simply knowing what you're doing and uh, using your support workers effectively. So if you have trouble with organisation and they are allowed to come into your house, get them to work with you, not for you, but to work with you about organisation. If you're in a disability service provider where there's a couple of people in the house, talk to them about routine, have it in writing, um, because there's some certain things that it just clears up as well. Um, and there are some certain aids that I found that you do need an assessment for, but Google Home is something that they will fund depending on your disability as well. Um, just be aware your internet bill will be considered an everyday living expense, so factor that into your budget as well. Um, another one is disability and budgeting. Um, I found Excel have some pre-made sheets about budgeting. Also shout out to the Financial Diet and your rich bitch friend. Um, they often have some quite sensible advice on budgeting as well. And guys, I did the video of things I'm stopped doing for my mental health. Um, this is a really hard one for me to admit, but I'm struggling with not having technology in my room. But that also eliminates the need for or the want for you to buy online. But also on the flip side, if you're able to do your groceries online and that eliminates the stress of going to the shops, organising a support worker, um, absolutely brilliant. I would say use it as well. And when I've been shopping online, I've noticed that they have special requirements if you're in disability services accommodation. I'm using that because my analytics are telling me I've got a lot of international viewers. So um, I have the NDIS playlist if you need to work out what I'm saying, guys. But online shopping can be both a blessing and a curse. I was listening to the news this morning and they were saying the buy now, pay later schemes, you're going to have to face credit um, checks. But guys, don't forget about asking about good old lay-by. Um, I know, or saving up for it, or if there's a second-hand option that you can use. I've often found, especially going over the second-hand clothing or um, Facebook, where people have what they call a pass-along bag, um, the concept being that you take out what you want of the bag, you put what you no longer want, need, use in the bag and pass it along to someone else. I have found that unless it's socks, bras and undies, I don't need to go clothes shopping anymore um, as well. So guys, this was, but if your disability, if your weight fluctuates, I would suggest, only a suggestion, keeping a week's worth of outfits for each season um, in the smaller sizes or larger sizes if your weight fluctuates whatever way and then you're not stuck 
if you do put on weight, if you do lose weight as well. Um, I know Jessica Kelgrad Frozard has got a really good video on disability and weight gain and what's appropriate and what's rude. Guys, I'll try and find that video and link it in the description below. But guys, what are your tips for staying organized day to day as well? Is it like myself, pen and paper and crossing off its to-do list? Is it using your smartphone? Is it using a Google Hub? Is it using an Alexa or something similar? Is it using a support worker? Um, let me know in the comments below. And guys, um, I will be taking a week off over Christmas as well to just reflect and recharge because we will have the new family arrival then. Please again like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.